Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Slayer back here again with another video. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm nearing four months of sobriety and I make these videos not only to help myself stay sober, but to help you guys out there stay sober as well. Um, right off the bat, man, I, I'm just gonna have to apologize. It is very late at night, I'm tired, but um, this was the only time that I really could find to um, film this video. So better now than never, right? Um, and that is, have I always been an addict? You know, man, I was thinking about this the other day and the more that I sat there and thought about it, it's like, yeah, I think I have always been an addict. Um, I guess some people call, call it like extreme, having an extreme personality. Uh, I guess you could call it that. Um, but I think that that, you know, I think that's addiction, you know? Um, I always, whatever I would get into, I would always jump head first. Um, and I think it was always a distraction from the things that were bothering me. You know, as a young child and growing up, I think that that's why I became addicted to all these things because I was masking a lot of my inner pain. Um, so yeah, man, let's, I actually wrote a list down. So let's jump into this. Uh, my first addiction ever, I actually wrote down my family. Um, you know, when I was a super, super young kid, things were halfway decent in my household. And, you know, I've said in past videos that my family's kind of crazy, but don't ever get it wrong, man. I love my family. They would be the first ones to say that they are crazy. Um, there was a lot of problems growing up. Uh, but when I was super, super young, and I'm talking about like from like, you know, the age of like, you know, up to seven, eight, things were decent in my house. You know, my parents got along for the most part. Uh, but once I got just a little bit older, that's when problems started. My parents, they just, man, they just started fighting left and right. There was major problems. Um, it was insane. Uh, the arguments just turned into all out brutal fights. Um, they never got physical or anything, but I mean, everything verbal that you could imagine, every curse word, all of that. Uh, I actually remember one time, and this is not throwing any shame to, uh, towards my mom at all. I love you, mom, but uh, this is the truth. I remember one time we were, I was probably like 10 years old and we were on a, a drive, a family vacation. We were driving and my mom was actually trying to quit cigarettes at the time. And at this time period, any time that my mom would try and quit cigarettes, she would just go absolute haywire. And on top of it, her and my dad were just fighting all the time. So all of this was kind of leading up, you know, they were fighting for like weeks on end leading up to this. But I remember we were driving and they were getting into a super heated argument. My mom was driving uh, so my dad was in the passenger seat. And I remember my mom got so pissed off that she ended up grabbing the wheel and turning it super fast. We almost flew off the road. I mean, it was insane, man. And I don't think she was trying to do anything to us, but I think she was out of her mind. And I remember we stopped on the way um, to where we were going to a gas station. We ended up getting cigarettes and she calmed down, but there was just a lot of fighting, man. So the more fighting that happened, the more I kind of started to detach away from the family and started to get into other things. That's where the next things come in. Um, soda, man, I, you know, that might sound ridiculous to some people, but me and my brother and, you know, my cousin, I have two older brothers and I have a brother that's younger than me that I don't even speak to now. Um, not because of anything I did. He's just not, you know, I don't want to throw any shade towards him, but he's just not a good person. He's done, he did a lot of cruel things to me. So he's, a, but he's my younger brother. Um, we're really close in age. And man, we used to get like 12 packs of soda and we would just drink the entire 12 pack and then we would get, uh, you know, 24 packs of like Mountain Dew Voltage. We would drink the entire case of that while, you know, playing video games uh, in, you know, in a sitting. So I was already preparing my liver, getting it, you know, nice and ready for the alcohol phase. <laughs> man, the damage I've done to my liver. But yeah, that kind of leads me into the next thing, video games. Soda and video games went hand in hand. Uh, when I got into video games, I still play video games today, but I play them 
in a healthy way now. I don't play them like how I used to. When I got into video games back in the day, it was very much 100% an addiction. I jumped head first. I mean, I would play for 12 hours a day sometimes. I mean, missing schoolwork, missing my uh, responsibilities, not doing what I'm supposed to, getting in fights with my mom, all over wanting to play my video game. Um, and this also goes with it, card games. Uh, I never got into Pokemon, but my older brothers were into Yu-Gi-Oh! So I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! as well, and that became an addiction as well, man. I still have a card collection. Some of these cards are worth serious money, you know, and I never did sell them all of my craziness and my addiction. So that just means that they hold a special place in my heart. But, um, and this goes along Hot Wheels. Me and my brother got heavily into Hot Wheels when we were super young. I mean, we, we were addicted to them. Tech decks, if you guys remember those, we got addicted to tech decks. Anyways, let's move on. So yeah, then the next thing was uh, I wrote was social media, TV, movies, and social media influencers, man. I got addicted to that stuff when I was young. And there was definitely a depression going on, man. I remember, I can remember, you know, back in this time period, I was just extremely depressed and lonely. I've kind of described in other videos, man. There's some stuff from my childhood that I'm, I just, I haven't gotten into. And I'm not 100% ready to get into, and one day I will. But I just felt, you know, I didn't feel like, I don't know, man. I didn't, I don't even know. I didn't feel good enough or something. And I didn't have an identity. And I was, even at a young age, man, I was looking for an identity. And I want to point this out too, man. From a young age, I was in, I was like fascinated with death, which is weird to me as well. I mean, I had some family members die at a young age. And I think maybe that's why. But it's like, it's always been like a, some kind of fascination with me and I shouldn't have been thinking about death at such a young age. You know, I remember I was super into Tupac at like 12, 13 years old, super into Tupac, you know, and just being, you know, fascinated with the fact that he died at 25. Um, and I used to think, man, I hope that I make it past 25. Like I was thinking that, like, I, I hope I make it past 21. I just thought, I don't know. It was just some kind of thought that I was going to die early. And I actually heard Steve-O in one of his um, interviews about him growing up, he pointed out and he said that a lot of addicts and alcoholics have that trait where it's like, we just don't think we're gonna make it, man. Like, we don't think we're gonna make it past a certain age. Um, and I think that that's really interesting. I also wanted to say this just real quick on a side note. Um, I've had like four or five people comment and say, I'm too young to be an alcoholic. First of all, I'm, I'm in my later 20s. Second of all, do you have to be what do you have to be 40 years old to be classified as an alcoholic? I do not understand that logic. Um, you know what I mean? It's three rehabs, multiple detoxes, you know, countless times to, to the hospital and gel and turmoil and, you know, pan, you know, pancreas issues, lung issues, liver issues. Is that not good enough? Does that not classify as an alcoholic? This disease does not discriminate. I've had people die from this disease that are several years younger than me so it's absolutely disrespectful to even say that anyways that's besides the point but i did want to just point that out real quick okay um this one's a little embarrassing but <laughs> for most dudes just be honest uh for dudes especially you know i don't know about women as much um but definitely for dudes man you know uh watching porn and stuff man and just like you know jacking off and shit i'm just being honest you know i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry for the the language but it's just the truth when you hit a certain age and you, you start to hit puberty that starts to you know you experiment and that becomes something you know and growing up my parents weren't really into god they're into god now my parents are really trying to change their ways now um both of them are and i'm proud of them for that but uh at the time it's like we grew up with two older brothers, man. Uh, you know, like, of course, I knew what this stuff was. I was witnessing stuff. Let me point this out too, guys. I was witnessing stuff and being part of stuff. I said it in a previous video. Parties where, you know, there was alcohol, you know, everywhere. People full out wasted, getting in physical fights, you know, fist fights. I, I was around, you know, parties that my older brothers, you know, threw where there was cocaine, drugs everywhere. People were doing drugs left and right. And I'm just a little kid standing there 
watching this, bongs, everything that you can think of. People are hitting joints and stuff. It's all around, man. So, I, you know, I just wanted to throw that out there, you know. I, so, <laughs> I was um, subjected to a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have been, you know, I shouldn't have seen at, at such a young age, you know. My, I've said before, you know, both of my older brothers are addicts. Both of them, them have been through some serious, serious shit. You know, they really have. And I saw a lot of that as a young kid, um, a lot of it. Um, and I shouldn't have been seeing that as a young kid, man. That probably wasn't the best. So yeah, I definitely, you know, hit puberty, got into that stuff. And then the next one, man, was longboarding and friends. So not all these are, see, not all of these are negative um, addictions, you see, but they were definitely an addiction, man. When, like, the, around the same time that I started longboarding is when, like, me and my cousin really started to make friends. And, and you know, we would go out for hours and hours, man, and just longboard, you know, the entire the entire city sometimes, you know, I remember my, me and my brother one time, there's a bike trail. We just jumped on that. We longboarded for hours. So therapeutic, so enjoyable, man. And I miss those times. I really do. You know, th those were times too, where there was no alcohol. I hadn't smoked weed. I hadn't take mushrooms. I hadn't done any of this stuff. So I just really enjoyed doing that stuff. And it did take my mind away from those demons and those problems, you know, in, in a healthy way. So longboarding and friends, man, friends as well. I became codependent. That's another thing about us addicts, man, is that we become very codependent, I've realized. Uh, so yeah, I, I, there was a time period where I didn't know if I could, you know, do anything without my friends. This next one is massive, girls. Man, I still remember when I met my first girlfriend. I was at a park, me and my cousin were at a park. I was 14 years old. And uh, there was this blonde girl and me and my cousin, well, it was actually my cousin who went up and walked over to her and talked to her. Uh, and she came over and I ended up meeting this chick and you know, we ended up dating. She ended up becoming my first girlfriend. And one, once I kissed a girl, once I did a couple, you know, couple you know things with a girl man that just set something off man I became absolutely girl crazy it was like the girls 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 motley crew you know <laughs> that's how it was man I was definitely girl crazy and girls became my life from the from that point on once you know I was 14 and that happened I, I just, I, the only thing that mattered to me was, you know, getting a girlfriend. And I always felt like if I didn't have a girlfriend, then I was an absolute and utter failure. And I had massive social anxiety, so that wasn't easy. But uh, yeah, this first girl really started something off. And uh, she was younger than me by a year. And this chick, I mean, you would have thought that she was 20 years old. I mean, she was, everybody thought that she was older than what she was. Um, and she was uh, matured not only in the body, but in the brain too, man. <laughs> she was a little, you know, out there. But yeah, man, so once that started, and then music came, you know, got involved because, you know, being depressed, you know, and then now I got the depression of girls. I'm always constantly stressing over girls. And then music comes in to soothe that depression, man. We get all, you know, I went through my goth stage. I went through my little bit of an emo. Um, stage sorry i was just reading a message uh so yeah music got involved and that's an addiction that i still have to this day man i love music so the next one this became a ginormous addiction and i usually do not discuss this topic on my channel just because people are so opinionated on this stuff um that it's hard for me to discuss it in a normal way but this was my next addiction man uh weed green once uh, once green got introduced into my life, man, one, you know, and I started smoking, I fell in love with it, you know. Uh, I try to stay away from it nowadays, by the way, guys. People have asked me. I stay away from it. Um, you know, in the past, the last few times that I have done it, it, it it's not the same experience uh, that it was. Like, it gives me kind of like a panic attack nowadays. And, yeah, it's been months. I don't, I don't mess with it. I stay away from it. Um... 
And if you touch it, that's your choice. That's not, you know, that's, we're all working our own programs. You know what I mean? Just because I stay away from it doesn't mean that you have to stay away from it. You know, it's, you know, your choice. But anyways, yeah, at the time I got addicted to weed heavily, 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 man. I fell in love with it. Again, it was like alcohol. I was always chasing that dragon of like the first like, you know, dozen times that I smoked because it was so, you know, at least for me, man, it was trippy. It was fun. Uh, me and my cousin would walk the neighborhood for hours and laugh and joke and trip out on the lights and stuff. It was just, it was a great time. But even that eventually came back and bit me, man. I started, you know, running out of money all the time. Um, my lungs got affected. There's always consequences, man. Um, you know, and your, my brain too, you know, people say, and I agree, there is no physical withdrawal for weed, but there's definitely a mental withdrawal, man. I went through a lot of depression. Um, you know, the drugs become your brain's new state of normal and it comes at a cost every single time, man, it comes at a cost. Then the next one I have on here is cigarettes. Oh man, I smoked for like seven or eight years uh i smoked cigarettes it all started from and this was when vapes first came out uh if you guys remember when vapes um first came out they were super in they were the hip thing to do if you guys remember this um it's not like now where it's like if you see someone vaping it's kind of cringe and i no offense to anybody who vapes um you know i do uh I do these, I do these Zens, so no, no judgment here, but this is when vaping was quote unquote cool, as if it's ever, you know what I mean? But uh, I remember my buddy came over and, and I took a few hits off of his uh, vape and I kind of thought, eh, I don't really care for that. But then the next, he was staying over at my place and uh, then I took a, a couple more hits again off of it. And I remember he ended up leaving the next um, day and he left his vape over at my place. I remember I woke up that day that he left and I had that, uh, I had an urge. I, you know, it was already in my system. I was like, oh man. And I remember I went down and I started vaping off it. And that was the beginning of my, um, nicotine addiction. I remember he came over and he took his vape back and I had nothing. And I knew so little about cigarettes and all that. This is a funny story, a real quick, funny story. You guys are going to laugh at this, but both of my parents smoked. Um, my dad quit for 10 years and then he started smoking again. Um, and now he's quit again. And my mom quit too, good for them. Um, but at this time they were both still smoking cigarettes. And so I went out in <laughs> to the garage area and I grabbed a cigarette butt and I ripped off the end where, you know, the nasty part was, and I could just had some, uh, you know, tobacco and I had my pipe for my weed. And so I thought at the time that, you know, you could just put it into a pipe and smoke it with no filter, just like weed. Man, was I wrong. I hit that thing, guys, and my head started spinning. I thought that I was gonna die. I really thought I was gonna die. My world was spinning, I fell over. It was pretty hilarious. But um, shortly after that, man, I started snagging cigarettes um, out of my dad's pack, out of my mom's pack, they'd leave them on the counter or something, I'd walk by, take a few. And just like that, man, I started smoking and I smoked for like seven years until I, I got on the Zen. And uh, my hope is to one day be able to put the Zen down as well. And now finally, the notorious, the one that is taken so much from me, the one that I hate, the one that I love though at the same time, I have a love-hate relationship with, alcohol. Yup, alcohol, man. I've said it in previous videos and I'll just say it again. Man, when I got into alcohol, I fell head first. At the time, it just solved all those answers for me that I was looking for. Um, until, of course, it didn't anymore. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Did you guys know that alcohol, the word alcohol comes from, um, I think an Arab word called, um, yeah, an Arab word called al cool, which means body eating spirit. Did you guys know that? Think about that for a second, guys. Doesn't it just make 100% sense? Body eating spirit, al cool, alcohol. That's where it comes from. 
And that's exactly what alcohol does, man. It it eats your soul alive. And I know some people are like, whoa, man, that's that's woo woo. I don't. That's just the truth, guys. And the people who have been through alcohol, they know that. Uh, alcohol is dark, man. It, it it really. When I say it's taken so much, it's an understatement. Um, not only from me, but from several family members. It, it, you know, it's not just been my older brothers who have had problems with alcohol. My mom even had a problem with alcohol for a little while. Uh, both, I have two uncles that had problems with alcohol. One of my uncles, uh, he was drinking super heavy and he ended up crashing and spinning his car several times and almost died. And that's what ended up waking him up to. He needs to stop. Uh, so yeah, man, alcohol has just been such a horrible thing um, in my life. It really has. And it took over my life and it still plays such a massive role in my life to this day. Man, yeah, body eating spirit, man. Um, you know, just crazy, just, just really crazy. Uh, yeah. And now, so after that one, guys, uh, I thought that I would put the last um, four things that I'm trying to right now remain addicted to. Number one I have is God and the Bible. I'm trying to remain addicted to, you know, trying to maintain a relationship with my God. I always point this out, man. I have no problem with anybody's beliefs. Not at all. I'm not that dude who's going to ever judge you. It's just not who I am. Um, but for me in my life, that is something that I'm trying to focus on because it keeps me in the right direction. The next one I have here is uh, sobriety. I'm trying to just get addicted to, to just staying sober, to just trying, you know, getting addicted to being myself, or getting, you know, addicted to just the good things that come with sobriety, you know, helping people, just being a good person in general. The next one I have is YouTube. Man, I'm not even going to lie. Ever since I started this YouTube, it has become an addiction for me. It really has. Uh, you know, I, I love this. I, I don't know how long I'll, I'll be able to do these videos for. I'm just being honest, guys. Eventually, I feel like I'll run out of stuff to talk about. But I have tons and tons of ideas and months and months worth of content and I've said it before, you guys have helped so much. YouTube has helped so much and it has become an addiction and I, I like it. It's been really good. So yeah, man, overall, I, I do think that I always have been an addict in one you know, way or another. I think that I've always been an addict and, and one that I forgot to put on here was food. Um, there was a, a stage and a time period in my life, it was very brief, where I was pretty chubby, guys. I wasn't like huge or anything, but I was pretty chubby. And I would sit there and eat, you know, whole bags of hot fries and, you know, just, I, I was definitely addicted to, to food and, and the way that food made me feel. Because at the end of the day, that's what we are addicted to, is stuff that makes us feel good. And stuff that changes our, our consciousness um changes the way that we feel we at least me man it's very hard sometimes for me to just be in my regular state of mind to just be sober it's very hard why i don't know it's just the way that we are you know i stopped kind of asking why a long time ago at a certain point you just have to accept it you know the first thing you need to do to get help is to admit that you have a problem and yeah, man, there's absolutely nothing wrong with us having an alcohol problem. And at the end of the day, we are more powerful than the alcohol and we can do anything that we put our minds to. So yeah, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm sorry if I repeated myself or said words over and over again. It's like I said, it's very late. It's like three o'clock in the morning and I still have um, some work that I need to finish. So yeah, guys, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, part three to um, my interview and my talk that I did with LD is now up. Shout out to LD. What's up, man? Uh, that's that's my that's my friend right there, man. Uh, shout out to LD. Um, part four 
is gonna be up um, tonight or later today, I guess, if you wanna call it that, since it is three o'clock in the morning. Uh, and that is gonna be the last part. I did leave out a few things in that video as well, so I apologize, guys. At the end, um, I kinda said that the main reason that I got sober was because of my ex, and that was the main thing that kinda catapulted me into getting sober. But there was also a lot of health issues, man. I had acute pancreatitis, I got pneumonia, um, my liver was, the doctors were saying that if I kept drinking, my liver was gonna fail and I was gonna die. So there was a lot of health concerns as well, pushing me to get sober. And on top of that, the destruction and the chaos with my family. I wanted to get my family back. I want a strong relationship with my family, my friends. I want a girlfriend one day. There was a multitude of reasons that has pushed me to want to be sober and stay sober. So yeah, guys. Thanks everybody. I love you guys. Please stay tuned. Um, I have a few different video ideas coming. Uh, Lane Staley's birthday is right around the corner. He's the lead singer of Alice in Chains. He died um, from a heroin overdose. They found him, he was like 80 pounds. Very sad story. I'm gonna be covering that and bringing that to you guys just as awareness, man. And you know, it's addiction. And I think that it might be able to help some people. And yeah, man. So. Love you guys. Until next time, I'll, uh, I'll see you guys real soon. And yeah, stay safe, stay sober, and peace.